two things we're going to be looking at today. We're going to be talking about something called the Red Scare, and then the other thing is the rebirth of the KKK. And they both happened about the exact same year, about 1919, 1920. All right. Uh, the first thing I need you to do, though, is in your brain, okay, I need you to think of which one is true for you. So do you know right now what communism is and why the U.S. disagrees with it? Or you don't know what communism is and or why the U.S. dislikes it. If you know about all the different, you know, if you know about the means of production and um, the bourgeoisie and the proletariat, and you're familiar with those kind of terms, you'd kind of put your, you know, you kind of like check this box in your mind, right? Now, this will be important because it will save you some time um, depending on, you know, what you know, okay? And again, if you don't know what communism is and why the U.S. dislikes it, that's okay. That's why I'm here, and I'm going to try to explain that to you, all right? Okay, so again, in your mind, check a box. Okay. So here's what we're looking at today. So if you're not currently able to right now, um, I want you to be able to leave this lesson understanding how communism, generally speaking, as Marx said, um, or as Marx thought of it, how communism saw the world and then why the U.S. philosophically disagrees with it. And then the second thing that I want you to look at is why did the 1919 Red Scare start and then why did it end? And then the third is why did the KKK come back? Uh, and what kind of influence did it have in places such as Indiana? Okay, so you can see here, um, we'll start, you know, you guys, the tally was your warm up, uh, and then if we need to, we'll, um, you know, depending on what you know about communism, I'll do a brief mini lesson on that. Um, then we'll kind of move ahead to changes. We'll talk about uh, seeing red, and then we have our mini lesson on the KKK. Here's where you divert, depending on what you know. So if you answered, on that warm-up kind of tally in your brain that you're not really that familiar with communism, you'll want to continue to keep watching the video. If not, you can just click, uh, let's say, right here uh, near my face, and it will skip you to where uh, you can go ahead and do that. So go ahead and do that. I, I won't watch, okay? I know it's like it's always awkward when people watch. So moving on. Let's talk about communism. If you don't know much about it, this is really um, here to give you the brief introduction to how communism sees the world. And this is a big deal because it kind of helps us um, establish what we need to know about the Red Scare of 1919. Okay, so a brief introduction to communism and why the U.S. dislikes it. Uh, please be aware, if you do need to take notes on this, I'm going to expect you know it, um, but I did not give you guys a note sheet for this. All right, so... Uh, Recall that industrialization has been happening, okay? And really, if I'm going to show you what communism is all about or teach you how it sees the world, you can't really understand communism without looking at these different, you know, basically without looking at all the different changes that have come along with industrialization. So things like wages, railroads, the assembly line, nine to five jobs, um, if they were lucky enough to get that sort of shift, uh, machines, urbanization, newspapers, factories, um, you know, railroads, canals, like these are all things that we've been discussing for a really, really long time. Okay, so when industrialization happens, okay, uh, it's not smooth. Um, industrialization has a lot of problems with it. It's very unorganized and messy at first. So you have incidents like over here, you can see this is a triangle shirtwaist factory fire. It was in Chicago. And basically, they had a bunch of women working in a shirtwaist factory. And the factory uh, caught on fire. I can't remember the exact reason, but uh, they basically didn't have fire codes set up and women just literally incinerated inside because they could not get out, okay? But there's also things like child labor um, and cities themselves where all this industrialization is happening are exceptionally dirty and are really, really unorganized, okay? The other thing, so besides it being messy and organized, industrialization doesn't apply equally everywhere. When industrialization occurs, there's simply a greater kind of divide between the social classes of society. So some people inherently make more money from industrialization and some people don't. Social class differences, mostly because of money, expand. Okay, and again, that's a really big thing to make sure you understand before you, you know, before communism will make sense. One critic of industrialization is going to be Karl Marx. Okay, now, he's not the only critic of it, but if you want to understand communism, he's probably the first guy you need to turn to. So Karl Marx, uh, down here, uh, was a German political philosopher, and he said that really what the problem was with industrialization was not necessarily that everything 
was wrong with industrialization. It's just that there was a better system. Okay, and he proposes a counter to capitalism that's, that we today would call socialism. And if you don't know what capitalism is, simply I'm going to define that very loosely as an economic system where private goods are sold for profit. And again, Marx is going to try to say um, that there's a better way that society could be. Industrialization causes a lot of problems. And when society has issues, the inequality that's in society comes from a struggle of ownership over what he calls the means of production. So these are things like factories, human beings, labor, uh, raw materials, supplies, uh, access to money. Okay, So the means of production are simply your ability to make goods and to make a product. When Marx says that it's people struggling and fighting over who owns these means of production, and that's all the history is, is that history then is just one gigantic long economic conflict of people who have and people who do not have, haves and have-nots. Marx okay, breaks down kind of things into stages, and we'll get that to here in a second, but what Marx would call the current conflict between the haves and have-nots are the bourgeoisie and the pro uh, proletariat, so that's the upper and lower classes. So you can kind of think of this as like the difference between like a Bill Gates and, you know, somebody who works at a I don't know, KFC or something of that nature. What Marx says the final goal is, socialism or eventually communism, is that the, these means of production basically are get redistributed so that people don't have to struggle over the means of production anymore. And again, this sounds great on the surface, but again, the United States is going to have some problems with that. Now, if you really, really want to get deep into um, Marx and how Marx sees the world. He does say that um, world history has moved forward in stages of those economic conflicts. So starting like with like Native Americans and primitive communism, where there are no social classes. But then like Marx says, okay, then then we move on to a new thing called the slave stage of world history, where it's slave owners versus slaves, and then feudalism, where you had landowners versus serfs. And again, you see it's haves and have-nots. And basically, what happens, Marx says, is that there's a thesis such as um, slave owners, there's an antithesis, something, these two butt heads, and then that produces a new synthesis or level of world history. And eventually what he said is we'd end up in the system called communism where there's no classes and no government. It just kind of like withers away and dies. So why does the U.S. not historically have a great relationship with communism? Well, it's simply that the ethics don't match up. The U.S. historically has prioritized freedom over that of uh, ensuring that everybody is equal. Okay, So in the United States, for better or worse, you have the freedom to do things that can put, your, that can put you in a place of better advantage over other people. Okay, Now that can be economic, which for most people is like, yeah, I want to make money, I want to be successful. Um, but it can also be like racial and those kind of things. It also, though, Okay. The United States is much, has a much more emphasis on capitalism, that you can go out and you can make a product and you can sell it for profit. And in communism, it's not that way. Things get distributed equally. Again, the means of production, nobody has a monopoly over them. They get shared and distributed. Okay. But then there's also kind of some more like deep kind of ethics and cultural kind of ideas. So like, for example, like the United States believes that human beings are naturally greedy people. And when capitalism takes that in mind, it kind of makes sense, right? You want to make money for yourself, so you're kind of being selfish. But communism inherently has to have the idea that human beings are capable of having no self-interest. That eventually, like, you don't do things for you, you do it for everyone. And this is kind of like a really, really big step. And this is probably the greatest critique of communism that you can make is that you people will somehow have the ability to not be selfish anymore and not to look out for themselves. I think uh, if you guys have seen movies like The Giver and stuff like that, where they kind of repress those emotions, um, that's kind of, uh, kind of an interesting thing to explore. So those are the big differences between or disagreements between the U.S. and communism okay but you should also then be able to understand kind of like how communism from that uh, wants to see the world so again things like that they want the means of production redistributed okay there's an emphasis on equality 
uh, and that you are trying to get rid of a lot of those economic problems that have bubbled up over time. Okay, but again, right, the U.S. is not a huge fan of the system because the ethics and the cultures don't really match up.